You treated the kids. I understand that they had a Halloween. This is where I was going with this. We got sidetracked. Anything to stay away from the wrestling. They had a Halloween special in the NWA is where I was going with this. I don't know how they pronounce the name of their pay-per-view. I've seen it written down. Sam Hain? Was that it? Do you have any insight into how that's pronounced? It seems that your thought process has been the same as mine when it comes to what the hell is the name of this pay-per-view. Did you see how many buys the pay-per-view got? Is that a real number? I I I saw something in the hundreds, but maybe a few thousands. I saw 212. Okay, <laughs> I well, that it was a few hundred. Um <laughs> but apparently the the most popular scene from that pay-per-view has spread uh, on, on Twitter and around to various places. And that's why we're talking about it because otherwise who would give a shit? But they shot themselves in the foot apparently at the NWA because they had a scene on their pay-per-view ordered by 212 people and you know whoever was in the room at the time that has apparently angered or disenchanted the CW network that they were just announcing they had landed programming on into pretty much saying, ah, we're not going to put that on after all. Maybe we'll stream it somewhere. And in two minutes, they shot them, not even in the foot. I think this is a full-fledged dick shooting here. But they angered the network that they were just bragging about getting on before they've ever even been on it yet to the point where now they're probably not going to get on it. That's the summary of the fucking situation. And they didn't do it for a finish or a match or a if edgy character that was going to get over like a Stone Cold Steve Austin or whatever. The f they did it for a comedy fucking bit where the announcers are speaking at ringside about something and suddenly their their attention is is focused on something going on in the room and they've got a table or a booth set up like a like they're trying to make it look like a VIP area in a club or something with he'll always be Daryl Van Horn to me but Father James Mitchell is how the kids know him the devil and he's surrounded by a group of not even good strippers, expensive strippers, but like trailer trash fucking tattooed strippers and weird looking people dressed dodgily. And they're swigging big bottles of booze and it looks like Scarface where they're actually snorting piles of cocaine off of the table. And the and the announcers are having to talk about this and kind of, oh my gosh, look what's going on up there. Holy mackerel. While the, the camera's just shooting it over and over and for no apparent reason. And uh, now we find out that that's a scene that they said Billy Corgan specifically wanted to have in the pay-per-view. And <laughs> I guess one of the 212 people that purchased this thing works for CW and said, ah, yeah, what the fuck are we doing? Brian, do you have any further enlightenment to add on this developing situation? First, let's say the obvious. This is one of the funniest stories in the history of wrestling. <laughs> Within a few weeks, the NWA, who has done nothing for a while, Billy Corgan bought the rights to it, they did one taping with Jim Cornette. That got a lot of attention. Nothing since has. There are fans upset about who he makes the NWA champion, but other than that, you never hear anything about the NWA. Then we hear they're bringing back the territories, <laughs> which I guess, I guess the James Mitchell segment was in the Miami territory. I'm not yeah. sure <laughs> what territories they're bringing Actually, back. Actually, 1984 Mid-South wasn't far off, but go ahead. <laughs> and then we hear that they're about to announce, I think, two different TV deals with a top 20 network. And then word comes out at CW mm -hmm. that it may be for a wrestling show and a reality show. 
And that's the last we hear of it until, for whatever reason, the promoter, I never thought I'd say this, without the restraints of a Dave Lagana, <laughs> the promoter thought it was a good idea to have, I don't even know what his, uh, James Mitchell's current character is. I'm going to assume he's a heel manager, but I don't know. He is the living incarnation of uh, debauchery and and uh, devilishness. And so it kind of, I mean, it, it. I'm not saying it wouldn't be something that he would be doing if he was just in a club somewhere, but uh, it, it being broadcast on the pay-per-view, I'm not sure that it, it was fitting for the scene. That's a real devilish fucking gimmick. You got the promotion canceled. <laughs> <laughs> for whatever reason, the manager's in the back of the room doing cocaine. Cocaine, by the way, cocaine. Not really as safe as it used to be when it wasn't safe yeah. years ago. Not safe at all nowadays. I wouldn't be promoting yeah. that. The Surgeon General has, in recent years has come down <laughs> heavily against cocaine use, especially off the tits of tattooed trailer strippers. And like you said, it was a throwaway thing. It wasn't like all of a sudden in the middle of the match, not that this would make it any better. Like, oh my God, he's doing rails off the ropes. What's happening? wasn't even that. It was just, hey, what's happening in the back of the room where no one's paying any attention? And, and who are these people with one person that we recognize and a bunch of fucking ugly women and weird fucking guys? And the fans sitting around kind of looking at them and laughing like, what the fuck is going on here? Now, you're the CW, and you want wrestling content. And we could say we've heard for a while, going back to, I believe, the early part of the spring, that CW was looking for wrestling content, and they were talking yeah. to various people. So you're the CW. You want wrestling content. Somehow Billy Corgan gets in that door. Maybe it's a Smashing Pumpkins fan. Who knows what? But he gets in that door. And if we are to believe what was reported, made the deal. Made a sale. And, and he may, in the process of going in that door, may have done the old shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder thing with somebody that was almost in that door and kind of got in first. Well, we will see what happens there. But the idea that he goes in there and he says... Hey, we have a pay-per-view coming up. You guys should watch it. <laughs> <laughs> they're watching the pay-per-view and there are the characters doing cocaine. <laughs> and they're like, no, you know what? Well, now we have the option. We could do a deal with a Billy Corgan and the NWA, or we could do a deal with a serious entity. And there are a lot of people. I mean, it's not news to anyone. There's a lot of people looking for TV deals right now, right now. So windows are open. Will the NWA end up, like you said before, on the digital platform of CW, which is that really going to be more valuable than YouTube? I don't well, know. If, they, if, if CW as a television broadcast platform makes a deal with another, as, what it had, what'd you say, serious or legitimate yeah. company, then the NWA probably wouldn't be on a streaming platform because a serious legitimate company with any kind of leverage would not want that. Yeah, and don't forget who's out there right now in the field. I mean, you hear CW and you think, oh, no one's really competing for that. It's still in a lot of homes. And right now, MLW is still going along. So obviously, they're always looking for TV. The NWA, look at what's happened here. Impact is stuck on Impact's TV channel, I believe. I don't think anything would happen yeah. there. Dave Marquez has shows syndicated all over the country. You have to think someone like that would be in talks with a network like, or a and almost an old school network in the sense, CW, like that, about shows. NXT's out there too. Don't forget about that. I mean, everyone's thinking NXT and Raw have to be bundled together. They don't have to be bundled together. I'm sure that's something that WWE would prefer, but NXT's out there too. Well, and, and also for the benefit of some of the younger listeners that don't really understand network television versus a national cable network the cw is an offshoot of several upstart networks from the late 90s early 2000s remember smackdown was originally on a network called the upn network united paramount network and uh, ovw here was on a station locally that was an affiliate one of the larger affiliates with the wb network for warner brothers we were wbki and God damn it. And then CW, was, there was something else going on. Then there were some mergers. But at one point, these three, maybe you're going to look that up or Google it, but these three networks had signed up affiliation deals with as many 
local broadcast television stations as they could. So now, while the CW doesn't have a big-time presence in terms of network programming that a lot of people watch, they have affiliations with tons of local broadcast stations in a lot of TV markets all over the country. And with people cutting the cord, as the kids call it, this is TV you can get with a goddamn antenna for free, literally for free. If you live in fucking Cleveland and you got a WB station, you can get it with a goddamn antenna. So it's not uh, it's not Fox, but it's certainly a widespread uh, distribution that doesn't depend on the cable companies and cable networks. What's the other one I'm thinking about? UPN, WB, and what? How do we get to CW? Well, I think those are the two big ones. I'm looking here on Wikipedia. WB and UPN both launched within one week of each other in January 1995, just as the Fox network had started to secure a foothold with American television audiences. And the CW is... It's derived from the first letters of the names of the two founding co-owners, CBS Corporation and Warner Brothers. It's owned by Nexstar, and it replaced the WB and UPN. I'm trying to see exactly how that happened. But you brought up there. Uh, it happened when they had a lot of shows that nobody was watching. Well, you brought up, you know, that they still have uh, different channels across the country. They're, affiliates is a word you could use. The biggest affiliate is Channel 11 now in New York. I always talk about every year they do uh, March of the Wooden Soldiers, and they do the U Log and everything. That's their biggest affiliate now, Channel 11 in New York, which has the Mets and Yankees. So if a wrestling program was on the CW network, they would be on WPIX channel 11 in New York. And that ain't, ain't a bad station to be on. If you're wanting people to watch your program. No. And it's a younger audience, I believe for that channel. Cause a lot of the programs they have, I know my kids have watched some of the DC comic shows on there. It's a younger audience and it's a different audience than the USA network. And now, again, I'm, I'm just focusing on NXT right now, but any of these people getting on that channel would be a big thing. It's interesting to think about NXT doing that. The other interesting thing is we heard the Billy Corgan thing was for two shows, a wrestling show and a reality show. Is that something that CW does want, two shows? Well, and there was also the discussion that Billy Corgan's wedding would be a part of some type of reality program. I... I'd, I'd, don't know if there's clamoring people clamoring to you know see footage after the fact of Billy Corgan's wedding these days, except maybe for family members of the lucky bride and groom. But you know that some kind of reality television show about wrestling with what we just saw them try to portray on their pay per view that might be something we're glad we're not ever seeing. Can you think about what the fuck would go on there with a bunch of really want to be indie level? Hey, let's stir people up doing a reality show. They'd all look like fucking morons. The cocaine thing, again, it all comes back to like everything we say about AEW. The boss matters. The mindset of the boss matters. And everyone's a big wrestling fan. And some big wrestling fans have a lot of money and they want to put it into wrestling. But they still may not know what really makes it tick. They may know some of what they like, and they may have weird, I'm not even saying weird, they may have things outside of wrestling that they enjoy that other people wouldn't, and they combine the two things. You know, I don't know if anyone watches football and says, you know, I wish someone would just do rails of cocaine in the middle of the fucking game. <laughs> not even a player, just someone in the stands, show them doing cocaine. But it goes into that, and you know, when you're trying to weigh the future of professional wrestling, and you look at the current crop of whatever you want to say, indie promoters or mid-level promoters, it's scary because no one has the right sensibilities to understand what makes this work, and it seems like everyone is their own worst enemy. Well, that, and that's the thing. It was completely self-inflicted, and it was complete. there was absolutely no possible return on risk. Okay, we're going we're gonna to stir some people up and potentially offend some people and have this scene or whatever. What money is it going to draw us? What is it going to... What TV network are we going to get on because of this instead of off? What <laughs> income, what tickets are we going to sell? What guy are we going to get ragingly over? No, it's just a goofy scene in the middle of another chaotic modern wrestling promotion. And 
Most of the fans would probably say, oh, look at that shit. But the people who matter, as I've mentioned many times, all it takes is a big sponsor or a programmer at one of the one of your main stations or your main station to get pissed off, and they don't need the fucking wrestling, especially if it's not WWF. Next month, the NWA is promising the first overdose ever on live pay-per-view. What do you think? Uh, and that's probably what they thought. What in, what in the, maybe they thought that was real. Who knows? Maybe it was real. I don't know. But may, these TV people, they don't. They understand the concept of pro wrestling. They don't follow it closely or understand why some of these things would happen. And if they are fans of a previous generation of wrestling that have now established positions of prominence, but they're in their 40s or whatever, yes, they're thinking back to the Attitude Era, but they've got they're they're working in television today, so. They, I would think they would almost have to be told uh, any television programmer today, no, we're not going to do what you used to see when you were 20 years old in high school in 1999. We will not have women flashing their tits in the goddamn audience. That's a, it, it, when you've tried to sell wrestling to TV programmers ever, whether it's now or whether it's 40 years ago or whenever it was, most of the time, you're not going to find a guy in the position to put you on a television station or a network who is currently a fan right now and watching and knows everything that goes on. But especially in the territory days, you were liable to find one. There was a fan when he was a kid in that area that used to sneak under the fence to see Ron Wright in Kingsport when he was 12 years old or... A similar story about Dusty in, in Georgia or whatever. And as long as you could give those people a program that wasn't going to cause them any fucking trouble, was not going to get complaints from people calling in that the boss of the whole station, who might be a Christian or a teetotaler, you know, whatever the fuck, you weren't going to see... Uh, the the devil himself with a pitchfork or you weren't going to see a bunch of fucking drunks or whatever the the spot was that might trip his trigger then you could get on the air and stay on the air and people would watch the program but once you pissed off whatever the fucking sore spot was in that market or that person or whatever it didn't matter whether people were watching or not because they didn't need wrestling as bad as you needed them well, you know, Brian, you know where Billy Corgan made his mistake, don't you? No. Because there, there was only a couple of hundred people that figured out how to watch that program. But even then, they knew where he was. If he had been smart enough to use our friends at ExpressVPN, then those programmers at CW, they wouldn't have known what they were watching. They would have thought it was some kind of wrestling from Russia or Bulgaria what? or the Isle of Malta. I mean. There's some level of something in what you just said that almost ties to what the sponsor does, but I don't think what they do has anything to do with whatever it is you just described there to watch the NWA pay-per-view event. Well, the point is, if you're on the internet, you don't want the internet service providers to know your business, and they do, because every time you go to a website, every time you have online activities, they know it, and then they can sell that information to ad companies, tech giants, street corner enforcers, blackmailers, extortionists. Can you imagine? There Whoa. is a guy named Guido that lives up in Cherry Hill, New Jersey. He's on their list. When they find out something about you folks out there in podcast land that you wouldn't want your wife or significant other to know, this guy named Guido will knock on your door and you will have to pay him every week to not spill the beans. I'll pay Guido to knock off the neighbor's gardeners right now. Well, no, that's a completely different branch of the uh, the business. Of Guido, yeah. Yeah, so Guido, it's Guido Incorporated to you. But nevertheless, that's what you don't want these internet service providers doing. It, it's like leaving your windows wide open and people being able to see in and everybody knows. I think you could agree with this, Brian. I think everybody out there could agree that the most 
fulfilling feeling in life is being able to walk around your home with the curtains wide open, naked as the day you were born, your appendages flapping in the breeze without a care in the world. Everybody does that on a daily basis, right? No, I don't think everyone does that. Uh, certainly not on a daily basis. I don't know if everyone would agree that that's the most liberating moment you could have in your life or whatever you said. Well, that's because they don't have ExpressVPN. That's why they don't do that. Well, well, because why would that, VP wouldn't it be more liberating to do that outside than inside? Well, you can get arrested for shit like that. But folks, if you're in your own home, when you, when you use ExpressVPN, the internet service providers can't see your online activity because your identity is anonymated. It's anonymated. It's animized. It's animated? Anonymized. That's what it is. Anonymized. That's a cool word, man. Anonymized by a secure VPN server, and your data is encrypted for maximum protection. On phones and laptops and routers and modems and everybody that shares your Wi-Fi or the neighbors that are leeching off your Wi-Fi or however that's dead, that, that's going to come to an end. You're going to be an island unto yourself and nobody's going to know where you are. As a matter of fact, your relatives are going to be calling the authorities. They're going to be trying to do welfare checks. But those cops knocking on your door, they're not going to know you're there with ExpressVPN, until the smell wafts through the open windows, nobody's going to know where you are. I don't know what kind of example this is, and that is really, again, some element of what the sponsor does, but I'm not sure that's what we should talk about. I think when you think about ExpressVPN, it's the ability to see programs sometimes that are on different services that are only available in other countries. With ExpressVPN, you are not in any country they're guess, they're geographically restricted. There's an apartheid on some of these programming that you can you can't get them in some places unless you go through the folks at ExpressVPN because they have no prejudices. Yeah. Yeah. And you can secure your online activity. So nobody including Guido is going to be able to tell your significant other that you were visiting that particular website that has all those cool videos. So Right now, folks, secure your online activity by visiting expressvpn.com slash JCE today. That's Express, once again, E-X-P-R-E-S-S-V-P-N.com slash JCE. You're going to get an extra three months free, three months of protection. That's 90 condoms. Expressvpn.com slash jce three months protection for, for extra three months for free from from the danger that you're in from people peeking in at you parading your tallywhacker around in your own living room again i don't think that's exactly what this does but expressvpn is your way to do what you need to do with to express let it VPN. all hang out let it all hang out or something do like what that. you want to do be what you want to be, go where you want to go, and nobody will know a thing about it because... The Fifth Dimension's been out of style for a while. Yes, express well, but Marilyn McCoo and Billy Davis Jr. had a hell of a career after that. ExpressVPN.com slash JCE. All right. Can I just say something officially? Yes, yes if, if you would like. I'd like to murder the neighbor's gardeners right now. I, I knew you were going to bring that up. I actually can hear some semblance of, of, of leaf maneuvering manipulation going on over there across the, uh, the way from last manor. Now they've, got, they've got a guy on a fucking, they've got a guy driving something and then they got three other people with fucking leaf blowers and they're working in tandem to blow it into the woods. Yeah. But now you're doing a, a fucking Dominic Mysterio. You're jacking the, the, sound level up so we can hear them <laughs> no i'm not no. yes you are